Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the seventh in a series of video tutorials on how to learn to code in Unity 5. So what we're going to do this episode is we're going to look at modifying text boxes via scripting. So this is probably particularly ideal for things like RPGs. So if you have uh, a lot of text boxes in your game, uh, an RPG style system, then this might be of use to you. It's going to be useful in other games as well, for like when you have a bit of voice acting, you want text to appear at the bottom of the screen or whatever. But I'm just going to use a basic text box. So in this scene, I've set up a canvas with a panel inside and a text box inside that panel. So it's just in the center of the screen. Uh, so I'm going to start in JavaScript this episode and then we'll convert it into C sharp. So right click, create JavaScript. and I'm going to call this one text mod. Open it up in Mono Develop or Visual Studio, whichever. So before we begin, what we need to do is we need to get rid of all that and we need to import Unity Engine.UI. That is crucial to this script. If you don't do that and this is your first um, UI script in your game, you will have a problem. So you need to use import unity engine.ui. We're going to have a variable and it's going to be the text box. That's going to be a game object, semicolon. And now I'm going to use function start for this one. And you can use pretty much any function you like. But as I modify this script a little bit further and use the yield um, bit of code, then that's where function update will fall down. So if you can use pretty much any function apart from update. So if, for example, you're wandering along through your game world and you want text box to trigger when you reach a certain point, you'd use function on trigger enter. So the way this is going to work is we need to declare the variable. So the text box, and then we need to say we want to get component. So get component dot and in spiky brackets you need text with a capital T and then open close bracket dot text equals quote and let's have hello this is a text box quote and semicolon so just to be clear what we've done here we've said that our variable the text box we want to get the component which is going to be called text which is right there as we've stated and we want to modify the part called text which is this here and we're going to change it to hello this is a text box so let's modify this a bit further and use the yield function wait for seconds and we've used that one previously so i'm not going to explain too much about that let's have four seconds and then after four seconds let's clear the text box so the text box dot get component dot text dot text you can clear it by putting a double quote so when we have the double quote it literally clears any text that is in that text box then let's wait for seconds again let's wait for one second and then finally let's change it to something else so the text box dot get component dot text dot text and let's have that as this is some more text and obviously you can have whatever you want in there so you put anything in there just to try it out and then close curly bracket and save. Head back to Unity. We shouldn't have any problems, I don't think. No errors. Okay, that seems that seems fine. So game object, create empty, and let's drag and drop our text mod onto there, and then drag and drop uh, drop our text onto the variable. So now when we press play, new text should never display. It should automatically change to hello. This is a text box which it does, and after four seconds it should go blank, and after one second this is some more text. So then that can go on and on and on for as long as you actually need it to. 
The most important thing about this is to remember to import the Unity Engine.UI. Now let's convert this to C Sharp. Let's get rid of that game object. Right click, create, and C Sharp. And we'll call it Text Mod 2. And open that up. Now what I'm going to do is similar to what we did um, with import unity engine.ui, what we need to do here is we need to put using and then we need to put unity engine.ui there. So it understands what we're doing right there. Next thing we need to do is we need to define our variable. And as you already know, we've we've defined variables before, so we can just do public and it's going to be, um, what should we call it? Let's just call it the text box again. So we have game object and then the text box semicolon. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of void update. And because we're using uh, the yield function in this particular script, we can't use void. So we'll use I enumerator. And then um, start. And we can almost copy this line of code from JavaScript because it's almost the same. There's just one decimal point which needs to be changed. So if we paste it and then we look at it and we've got the text box dot get component. We need to get rid of the dot after the get component. You should hopefully notice that this word text here changes from red to black. That means that it's working correctly. And as you already know, with the um, yield function, so you need yield and then return new, wait for seconds, then wait for four seconds as we did in the other one. And then next thing, let's copy from our JavaScript again. So let's copy, paste and get rid of that dot. So there's a perfect example, it turned red there. We get rid of the dot, it turns black. We know that's right. So then let's copy our yield return new wait for seconds. Let's change it to one second as we did in the other script. And then finally, our last line of code just there. Copy and paste and get rid of the dot and save. So now these two scripts are absolutely identical. They will do the exact same thing. One's in JavaScript, one's in C Sharp. So now let's go to uh, game object, sorry. Create empty, drag and drop our script. Same as last time, just need to put our text box straight into there and press play. And we should have the exact same results as last time. Hello, it's the text box, blank. This is some more text. Done. So logically, as I say, you could go on and on and on with this. So just to make this uh, a little bit more interesting. Let's get rid of that. And let's have that set as 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.2, let's have 0 0.2, make it a bit quicker. So let's have all weight and let's have this as hello, I'm A. And then text box and save. So now within the case of less than a second, our text box should say, hello, I'm a text box really, really quickly. So press, oops. Okay. Huh, it's not liking that. Okay. So let's just change it to one just to make things a little bit easier for this. It's moaning about floats and um, integers. I'm not going to go into that this episode. It's it's not too vital. It'll probably be the next episode, to be honest. So hopefully if we go to console, that should clear. Press play. So we've got hello, I'm a text box. So C Sharp behaves slightly differently from JavaScript in this respect because generally um, how can I put it? JavaScript is a little bit easier to work with. That's why a lot of beginners try to start with JavaScript. 
C sharp can be a little bit more complex and complicated, but you end up with the same results if you know how to convert. So I'm going to change this weight for seconds to 0 0.2, like what we originally tried. And I'll put hello, and then I'm a, let's copy that, and again, and have text box. So that's how you would convert that pretty much to JavaScript from, uh, from C Sharp. So let's get rid of that game object. We need to put our JavaScript on there. So game object, create empty, text mod, straight on there, text. So now this should say, hello, I'm a text box even quicker. There we go. So there's many different ways you can use text box to display different things, and you can really go into detail with this. And like I say, if you make an RPG, it's quite recommended that you do it this way, if you feel most comfortable doing it this way. So until the next episode, Thank you very much for watching.